Hi everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. This is our environmental monitoring and modeling course. And today we're working through Lab 9, working with vector datasets. The objective of this lab is to familiarize yourself with features and feature collections in Earth Engine. Vector or table datasets are useful for stratifying study sites, for defining regions of interest, for reducing and clipping images and image collections. If you've been taking our GIS courses, working either in QGIS or ArcGIS, you'll be familiar with shapefiles and other vector datasets. Throughout our course, we've been using geometry tools by, by drawing them in by hand, but that's often not feasible for, for larger studies where we want to use um, shapefiles or tables with a large number of rows and columns and additional attributes. So within Earth Engine, if you head over to code.earthengine.google.com, you'll see that if you go to the Assets tab, you have the option of uploading either your own GeoTIFFs or your own shapefiles or CSV files. So this is a good way of importing your own vector or table data sets into Earth Engine. But at the same time, within our usual search bar, the catalog in Earth Engine holds a lot of vector data. Um, even within Australia, for example, if we search for soil, it will bring up um, a table soil landscape grid of Australia. But for today's lab, we're going to work with a, um, a data set called Resolve. And it's a, a very nice breakup of the world's different ecoregions. So if you search for ecoregions up here, you will see the Resolve ecoregions data set popping up. Um, if you head down to the bottom, you'll find a link to a bioscience article describing how these ecoregions were, were mapped out and underlying principles. So we can import that directly into our script using this snippet of code here, variable ecoregions equals feature collection resolve ecoregions. 2017. So it has a collection ID the same as the satellite data we've been working with. We then have the option to display these. So if I copy it to the clipboard, paste it in here, we'll see um, the layers slowly loading up. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that actually there is global coverage of these data sets. Here it comes. Um, we loaded two layers. The first one is just an example to show you that if you don't specify a color, it will load up with black outlines and gray inside. Um, if we define a color, it will map over in that specified color. Importantly, we can query these areas using the inspector. We hit on these drop down lists, you'll see a lot of properties biome name, biome number, eco ID, eco name. So lots of attributes housed in here. Um, one thing we can adjust is the stroke width. So if I copy this and I'm going to copy over these two. Delete that, paste in here, hit run, and um, called up a slightly different color now. It's a greenish color, and we have to find a stroke width of five. So we'll see that shape file overlaid with quite a thick boundary. I can reduce that to one, for example, hit run, and now we'll 
we should see a much finer boundary between the different regions. Here it is over here. Now that's great, but um, often we'll want to be able to map these out in different colors. So if you read through here, that's our next step. Um, we have to bear in mind the way that different data sets are handled in Earth Engine. So if we want to start playing around with some of these colors and the way they are presented, we're first going to create an empty image into which we can paint the features we want. So we'll copy this code, paste it here, hit run, and now you'll see that we're just painting the edges, not shading the interiors. If we wanted to define different colors per per biome number, um, we can follow these steps here and to render both the interior edges of the features, the interior and edges of the features, we need to paint the empty image twice. So we need to make an empty image, define a color palette, and then map the full outlines with edges and folds. Copy that last one. I can actually delete this section. Just add that. So that's that last script. Hit run. This is probably the one that's most useful to you. I can actually remove that one for now. Hit run again. So this is just the the very last um, piece of code under mapping feature collections. These previous steps are just really showing you step by step how you can adjust different aspects of the map. But the one that would be most relevant to us is first defining an empty image, constructing a palette, and then filling the outlines. So what's nice about this is we can see the different biomes um, mapped out across the world. Now for the next part of the tutorial, just going to give you a quick introduction into how you can filter um, a feature collection in a similar way to how we've been filtering image collections. We can clear the script, go back to lab 9, filtering a feature collection. And I'm just giving one example here. Um, this comes from the Google Earth documentation, and it involves loading up watersheds from a data table. Um, running a function to convert the area, the, the square kilometer area, from a string to a number, and then calculating that as a number. We then define a region that covers the continental USA, and then we're going to filter geographically to pull out only watersheds that are contained within the continental USA. We're then going to print, um, we're going to ask a question and then print the answer to the console. So that's going to be how many watersheds are there within the United States. And we also want to know how many large watersheds there are. And we'll define those as those having an area greater than 25,000 square kilometers. We're then going to ask another question, say, how many of these large watersheds are there? And we'll print that answer to the console. So this is just to show that Google Earth Engine isn't only about the, the images and the mapping. We can run um, a lot of data analytics within Earth Engine, um, particularly 
restructuring and querying tables, for example. So in this case, we wanted to know the number of watersheds in the United States, 336 in this data set, and the number of large ones, larger than uh, 25,000 square kilometers, taking a little while to compute, but 140 is the answer. So we can do a lot in Earth Engine. It's not only about the, the maps and the imagery, is also powerful for querying large table data sets. Um, I'd like you to repeat the step above using the HydroSheds database for Australia. If you click this link, it will import your, it'll import the HydroShed into your Google Earth Engine script. You can find this, of course, on the website, geospatialecology.com. This is Lab 9. Thanks for your time. Cheers.